This conference is really dedicated to innovation and the, the cross-section of industry. And it's pro-innovation, right? We're for it. Oh, good. We're all for it, <laughs> right? Everybody for it? Mm -hmm. So what do you see going on out there that you think is the most interesting? Oh, God, there's a, there's a ton of stuff. Where, where, where should we start? Uh, genetics. Give, a, give us a priority list. I, mean, I, think, can, I, I think cancer genomics uh, the, uh, is just um, incredibly... Uh, uh, innovative. I think that there is a lot to, to learn in cancer genomics. I think there are going to be a lot of applications to it. Um, so I think cancer genomics, precision medicine writ large is a, is a, is a huge issue. Um, I think that our experience now in device development is, is really accelerating. You look at the percutaneous valves that are being uh, placed, uh, aortic valves, mitral valves, that whole device development field um, is really moving ahead dramatically. Uh, and I think, as I said before, uh, if you look at artificial intelligence as a, as, a, as a stack, I think every aspect of that is going to influence medicine. And I can't stress enough how... So that's not just diagnosis you're talking about. It's not just diagnosis. And, and this is, has this is, this is disrupted every industry. It's going to disrupt healthcare. You said, I'm, I'm going to tell on you if you don't mind, you said backstage when... when Dave said we're still going to need doctors. You said, you know, we may not need all those doctors. It's, <laughs> we probably won't. And I'll give you a perfect example of that. Uh, we've looked at and co-developing co co with a company um, a machine learning, uh, you know, sort of neural network uh, echocardi echocardiogram uh, company. So you can teach somebody in two hours how to do an echocardiogram, sonogram of the heart that usually takes five or six weeks to train a sonographer. Um, as this technology evolves, reading an ejection fraction, the pumping function of the heart, uh, can be done as good as, if not better, than an expert cardiologist. Reading the stenosis or the tightness of the aortic valve can be done as good as, if not better, than a, than a cardiologist. And so you can easily see you're not going to have echocardiograph uh, techs. You're not going to have as many ultrasonography cardiologists. And we can go down and, and look at the same things in radiology and in pathology. So this idea of healthcare being one out of every nine jobs in the country, I think is gonna start to go away. See, I, I'm, I'm thinking, Dave, if I'm having a serious heart problem, even if a machine can tell me that, I'm gonna wanna have somebody I can look in the eye. I, I think on the diagnostic things, you're probably right. I think on the therapeutic side, on the caring side, you're never gonna replace a human being, and I don't think you want to. Um, I think it's a very interesting world we're at now. If you were to add, I love all those advances, but they're high techy. To me, the low tech advance, and we actually have two companies here working on in the conference, is one of all compliance with a medication. Yeah. So I can tell you a medication, if you're not gonna take it the right way, <laughs> it ain't gonna work, and then society has to bear the ramifications of that. That's going to yeah. be a key one. Yeah, no, I, I, I was just, I spent yesterday in a prize judging contest and there was a, uh, the Chicago Tribune won the award or, or was one of the finalists for the award with a series of stories where they went into pharmacies right. and, and gave prescriptions of two drugs that interacted poorly in a couple of cases actually could cause death. Uh, and the pharmacies failed more than 50% of the time to tell them about the drug well, interaction. Well, look, a couple That's of things. fixable. Yeah. It is, but let me just um, uh, disagree with you on a, a couple points. You can do an, if you can do an echocardiogram on, in sub-Saharan Africa for patients who are at risk for rheumatic heart disease, that's a big deal. If you can do a fetal sonogram in Africa where there's one obstetrician for a million lives, it's a big deal. And it will be a big deal in our country too. So these techniques will change dramatically the access to primary care and, and primary prevention. And I would also disagree on one other point. There are many things that machines do better than human beings. Empathy may not be one of them. Empathy <laughs> is not one of them, yet. But I think that if you take a look at some of the studies on dermatologists looking at melanoma lesions, expert dermatologists uh, do extremely well compared to a machine. Uh, general practice dermatologists don't do as well in terms of identifying a melanoma. So I don't think doctors are going to go away. But, but I agree with you. I mean, but every example you've given is linear diagnostics. I mean, there's simple diagnosis, interpreting an image. 
yes, machine vision, artificial intelligence, machine learning will be very good at interpreting images. But that's not 90% or 95% of medical care is the opposite. And they're not going to be as good at that. I would, I would venture to say that complex diagnosis will occur in our lifetimes and, and not, that, not, that, not that shortly uh, from now. See, so we said, but you know, listen, if I had, you had asked me, are complex diagnosis one of the big problems we have in medicine? The answer is no. I mean, in our country. I mean, you're right, Sub-Saharan Africa and other things. But diagnostics, I mean, we can diagnose disease pretty well. I could figure out if you have lung cancer or not. Um, I could figure out what drug to treat you pretty well without a computer for that right now. That being said, big data is going to change everything. Right? A trial came out last year showing that if you had ovarian cancer and want a beta blocker, an inexpensive drug that's generic to treat blood pressure, you live four and a half years longer. We would have never known that from biology, but big data showed us that, and there's a prospective trial now which is showing that it benefits. So we're going to learn a lot from this big data, if you will, and we're going to learn discrete packet by packet better ways to answer a question.